Good morning. Ohana means family. And family means no one gets left behind. Now those words may sound similar to many of you in the room. And you may think that, well, yeah, that's from that Disney movie, uh, that Lilo and Stitch, I think it was. Um, and it is from that. But for me, those words have a much deeper meaning. Um, just two months ago, it was those words that a few girls ages 10 to 13, a few 14-year-olds and 15-year-olds in Black Girls Code used as they were describing the application that they would create after two days of hacking in the Global Fund for Women's Ignite Girls Hackathon. They had one charge and one mission. They were to create an application that would create safe spaces for women and girls. So I was really surprised um, after the first day to go in and see what they had created and to see that they were actually diving into these deep questions as young women related to things like this, that there's an average of about 552,000 women per year that are victims of at least one form of non-fatal victimization. And they were very cognizant of social media conversations around bring back our girls and abduction of girls across the world from them, from being right there in Oakland. But even more so than this, when the girls decided to create this application, the Ohana app, what struck me the most as a mom is that they were saying they wanted to create an application so they could feel safe walking home from school. And so what they created was the Ohana app, which was a mobile app that this team of BGC students created that included a safe sense tracking device and a mobile application. And the whole focus of this application was to make sure that girls were prevented from being abducted, sexually harassed, and vic or victims of domestic violence and to build self-confidence. So these young women, ages 10 to 13, were able to see an issue that impacted not only them, but girls like them, and use technology as a lever to create a solution. And this is a, a picture of our team, Ohana, that created this app, which became one of the finalists in this global women's hackathon for women's rights. These girls and Team Ohana represent just a few of our girls, which we affectionately call tech divas, that take a part of the programs that we do with Black Girls Code. I like to think that they are bending the stereotype of what it means to be a coder and what impact coding could have on our world. When we started Black Girls Code in 2011, we were really addressing this important issue. And Robin talked a lot about this in her speech right before me. But there is a serious gender divide in the technology space right now. And women and girls are being left behind or they're totally missing in both the classroom and online spaces and even in the workplace. And this was something that I wasn't really ready to accept in 2011 when the seed for Black Girls Code was planted. When I began my college career at the end of the 80s, um, there was a peak moment for women in computer science. Women received approximately 35% of bachelor's degrees in computer science in the US. Since that time, that number has plummeted. It's less than 18% now for all women. But for women of color, that number falls off a virtual cliff. African-American women in the US only receive 3% of bachelor's degrees in computer science. And for Latinas and Native American women, that number is less than 1%. It was these statistics that were really the wake-up call for me in 2011. and really planted the seed for what would become an organization 
determined to change the image and the face of technology. Our solution is to introduce these young women of color, and we start very early in the pipeline at age six or seven. Um, we introduce them to technology with a goal of letting them understand the power of becoming both builders and creators and not just consumers of technology. We have a hope to give these girls the skills and the self-confidence to become the new leaders in this technology inner space that we're going through in this revolution that we're seeing across the world. Our goal is to become the Girl Scouts of Technology and we want to introduce over one million girls to coding by the year 2040. When I talk about the programs and how we do this work, this very important work of introducing these girls to technology, we really try to tap into all of the different areas that they can learn about. So that may be web design, that may be robotics, it could be mobile app development or game design. We know that not one area is going to resonate with each and every girl, but we are determined to make sure that they find a place for themselves in technology as a creator and not just as a consumer. When we look at why coding matters, there's really a couple things that I wanted to point out. In the wake of the Arab Spring, the United Nations declared that internet access was a basic human right. And yet and still, even with this declaration, at the end of 2013, only about 40% of the world's population has access, basic access, to the internet. And women are coming online very slowly to their male peers, with an estimated 200 million fewer women than men online in 2014. Besides this lack of access to technology, we also know that too few women are leaders, innovators, and decision makers in an increasingly technological and connected world. Robin also spoke a little bit about this and then we go into it and code her movie that she's created, the documentary. But we also can see that in the numbers and the diversity statistics that were released last year by most of the major tech companies, where women in technology held less than 10% of those leadership positions overall in every single tech company that we all know and love. But when we looked at people of color, those numbers were even less. So there were really about less than two or 1% people of color in technology positions in all these companies as well. The results of this gender and racial technology gap in technology is really real. Not only do women and girls experience inequality due to a lack of access to technology, we're often considered just the consumers and not creators. Today's technology does not reflect the diversity of women's experiences, imagination, or their ingenuity. And by limiting the participation of women and girls in science and technology, we too often limit ourselves to only half of the world's ideas, preventing solutions such as Ohana from finding its way to women and girls across the world. The work of Black Girls Co. is about so much more than just coding. I love this quote by the CEO for Global Fund for Women, which says, a global technology revolution is taking place. And if women and girls aren't a part of it, the future for women and girls' human rights is bleak. We're hoping to change that dynamic with the work we're doing with these young tech divas. We're hoping to teach our girls to be builders and not just consumers. We're hoping to teach our girls how to solve problems, how to hack the issues that are important and impactful to them in both their communities and their world and breed more solutions like Ohana. We're hoping to teach our girls to exhibit self-confidence and also a sense of self-efficacy because the messages about their ability as technology, technologists are often that they're not capable and they're not equipped, which is not true. 
We're hoping to teach our girls to become the leaders and the innovators of tomorrow. And each of these students are an example of how that plays out in the work that we're doing. We believe that as a human family, we have an obligation to enable and protect the human rights of women and girls everywhere, including their rights to use technology as a tool for empowerment. By removing these barriers for women and girls, access to technology and teaching these girls to code, we will enable opportunities for connection, education, empowerment, imagination. And we can create both a clear and walkable path for these young women who are often marginalized and not paid attention to, and give them the skills to hack their human rights. While this global technological revolution is taking place in our world, we must be sure that girls have a seat at the table. These are the new faces of technology. These are the future innovators and leaders in the technology. And we know that without a doubt, if we empower and uplift them, they will create solutions that will create a better world for us all.